In this video, we're going to learn about constructor delegation in C++. So constructor delegation allows one constructor to use another constructor within the same class. And by doing this, we can actually reduce the amount of duplicated code in our class. So let's go over an example here. We'll make a class for rectangles. And our rectangle objects are going to have four member variables. They'll have a length and a width and an area and a color. And we'll make a print member function to print out rectangles. So we'll say void print and we'll output the length and the width and the area and the color. So we'll output the length and we'll just copy this. And we'll do the same for width, area, and color. So width, area, and color, and then width, area, and color again. Then we're going to make two constructors. Our first constructor is only going to accept length and width as arguments. So it'll look like this. We'll say rectangle int L and int W. And we'll set length equal to L and width equal to W. And we'll use these to calculate the area. We'll say area is equal to length times width. Then we'll make another rectangle constructor that's also going to set the color. So we'll say here, rectangle, int L, int W, and it'll set the color based on another argument provided to it. So we'll say here, string C for the color. And we'll set length to L, width to W. We'll compute the area using these again, and then we'll set the color equal to the parameter C. Now we have two constructors they can both help us make a rectangle object. This first constructor won't set the color, but that's fine. The color can just be an empty string, and we could say it's an optional member variable. Let's scroll down here now, and we'll actually use these constructors. We'll say rectangle, rectangle one, and we'll say five, 10, and then red. And then here we'll say rectangle one, dot print. And if we save and run this, we should get a rectangle with length 5, width 10, area 50, and color red. And so what's gone on here is that we've used that second constructor here that accepts three arguments. If we take out that third argument here, red, it's now going to use that first constructor that accepts only length and width arguments. So now if we run it, we get length 5, width 10, area 50, and color is an empty string. And we're going to say that's okay. So the problem with this approach is we have a lot of duplicated code in our constructors. These lines here are exactly the same. The work we're doing is exactly the same. There's no need to repeat this twice. If there was a bug in one section of code, we would then have to fix it in two places. We like to reduce code duplication when we can, in order to improve the maintainability of our code. We actually call this kind of situation a code clone. So how can we fix this using constructor delegation? What we could say is colon rectangle L W. And then we can actually delete these lines here. Because what's going to happen is that this constructor is first going to call this constructor here. And it's going to pass it as arguments L and W. And this constructor here will then set up the length, width, and area, just as this constructor was previously doing. Then this constructor can continue to do more work. So after this constructor is called and does some of the setup work, this constructor can continue to do more setup work, in this case, setting the color. So we'll save this and we'll give this version a try. So if we save and run this, we'll find we get length five, width 10, area 50, and color empty, exactly as before. If we say here, comma, red, and save and run this, we get length five, width 10, area 50, and color red. And what's going on is that both constructors work, but now they're both working together. So here we could output constructor two. 
and then the first constructor will output constructor one. Just so we can see how they're working together. We'll say constructor one, output an inline, and we'll save and run this using this version here, where we're calling the constructor with five, 10, and red. And if we save and run this, we get length five, width 10, area 50, and color red, but we also get constructor one and constructor two. And what's going on here is that this call to a constructor right here is using this version here with the three arguments. And this constructor now first calls constructor one. That's why we get constructor one output first. Then after that's done, this constructor will continue with its work. It sets the color and then it outputs constructor two. So that's why when we save and run it, we get constructor one followed by constructor two. So this is how we can use constructor delegation in C++ to reduce the amount of code duplication in our classes. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.